All right, we're gonna get started with our crew chief uh, media availabilities with our Hendrick Motorsports crew chiefs. Uh, we're joined right now by Alan Gustafson uh, with the number nine Hendrick Motorsports Chevrolet. We will actually just open it right up to questions for Alan. We'll start up here in the front with Jenna. Hey Alan, hey, Jenna. Um, I went out in the garage today and they're about four deep at, at the uh, nine stall and they were cheering the, just the car. N nobody else. So how does it feel out there to kind of be back and, and it's a little bit closer to normal and you guys are being treated like the rock stars? Yeah, I mean, it's always flattering, you know, to have uh, that kind of fan base and people super excited to see, like you said, just the car and, you know, the buzz that comes with that and the energy that that provides. I mean, that's, I think that's what, you know, most all of us love about this, right, is the, that uh, energy or I don't, you know, what the right expression is but you know the adrenaline running and the energy and the, you know the positivity and all that stuff so the fans are a big part of that I mean it just yeah it just is a huge magnifier to what we do so it's great can you feel it, I mean obviously you can feel the difference from last year to this year does this feel more like a championship yeah I mean yeah just being here right I mean that's this is another example of you know, this didn't go on last year. It was, you know, Skype from wherever and, yeah, sitting here talking to you. I, know, I mean, when you're here, I know it's a big deal, so. It's when, you know, when Bob's here. Well, Bob's always here. You know, Bob's, Bob's, Bob beats Bob's, me here. You know, Bob's committed. That's one thing I love about him. <laughs> I'm not going to. So uh, I have one question about Chase. Um, last year, it looked, at, you know, for us, I'm not talking about, you know, for, to us, it's like, oh, yeah, he got real hot at the end of the year, went through, you know, took a big step in his career. This year in this period, it looks like he's taken another step in his career in that like stood up to Harvick, I, I'm not, you know, I'm not gonna let you push me around, things like that. I, is that accurate? Yeah, I mean, I think, he, yeah, you, you, you never know, right? Even is he taking steps or is he just taking advantage of his opportunities? But yeah, I certainly agree with your sentiment. And, um, you know, to me, I think the great competitors, I'm gonna even say drivers, you know, find a way in whatever situation they have presented to, to be successful and make it happen. And, uh, you know, last year, certainly what you described, we got hot and, and won, had to win our way in, won our way in. And this year, um, it's been much more of a street fight, right? You know, just had to scratch and claw, you know, scratch, scratch and claw our way through and deal with the, you know, Charlotte stuff and, you know, just, just make it right. Just stay alive, and and I think he's done an amazing job at that. And that that to me is what you know when when the chips are down. That's when the you know the greatness comes out. And I think he's showing that right. You know, I mean, how long? How is it last forever? Or is it in all different situations? But I certainly think when you look at the best ever in our sport, they've been able to do that. And he certainly has done that. You know, certainly in my opinion, these last couple of years. We'll go to Bob and then Nate. Uh, Bob Parker's Fox Sports. I, I don't know if you'll tell us, but you, can you tell us? Uh, the Are you live streaming this right now? Bob? Not live streaming. Oh just gosh, taping. come on! Uh, but it's being live streamed on NASCAR's website. So. Oh well, I mean, yours is. I think you have more followers than NASCAR. Does. <laughs> uh, I mean, is this a car that you've used before? And with this being the last Gen Six race, was there any? I can't imagine you all would say, well, we're not going to build something new if you felt like it was better. But just yeah, just if that impacted this preparation at all yeah no so this is it's it's cool to me it's this is um 1278 this is the last gen 6 uh car chassis built it's the it's new it was the last one built and you know presumably maybe the last cup chassis henrik motorsports ever built so yeah it's really really cool and uh we did everything we could um certainly the rules are really tight and kind of whittled down but yeah we did everything we could on the car and um yeah, I tried to do everything we, we, we could to, to make it as good as possible. Can, can, is this a car you've used before, and if so, where? Uh, it was the 1191, ran here in the spring, and it has run nowhere else since the spring. Um, we had a good run then, and obviously we had uh, peer road speed issues, just, you know, execution on, on our end. So uh, that car has been there. We've tuned on it and loved on it and she's ready to go. As Bob noted, we are joined by Cliff Daniels with the number five Hendrick Motorsports Chevrolet. Good job, Bob. <laughs> Thanks, Bob. <laughs> go ahead, Nate. Nate Ryan, NBC Sports. Uh, for both of you guys, um, the Gibbs guys were in here earlier and we, of course they were asked about 
being behind you two guys on the speed chart. So Gabe Hart said something like, you know, it doesn't really matter to him. He wants to be a second up on the field no matter what. Um, I, I, how do you guys assess sort of like where you are and does it matter at all that you were a little bit ahead of where they were in practice? Uh, at the end of the day, it doesn't matter. If I had to pick, I'd rather be ahead than behind. But, you know, does, it's not a great indication of what's going to happen on Sunday. I don't feel like in the track where we hadn't evolved to get to that point yet. So, like I said, you know, we're all competitors. And if we're choosing, we'd like to be on the top. So, we'll take it. Well said. Team happy? I mean, the car was good, I guess. Uh, I'm just happy to be here. Like, it's good, right? It's, I mean, it's uh, like Jenna was alluding to. It's kind of fun to come here to uh, – to uh, Final Four and have the buzz of the media and the fans and everything, so yeah, it's fun. Cliff, your car was it good? Um, I I don't. We we spent so much time at the end of practice and laughing because the same conversation we just had at the end of practice, you know, trying to understand where we are. Larson wasn't happy with it. I wasn't happy with it, and so we wanted to look at what to change. But the resin or the PJ one, whatever you want to call it, never came in, and I think it will for Sunday. So. Everything you thought you knew today is just irrelevant. Um, so what that's going to mean for Sunday, nobody knows. Whether we were – I agree with Alan to, to be ahead of him right now is okay, but it's probably not a great indicator. You know, whether you were first or 30th right now, the track's going to be so different for Sunday. We just got to um, make the right adjustments as the race goes along and, you know, respond to that. So carrying that to tomorrow, I mean, knowing what you did last year with Chase Allen and knowing that qualifying doesn't determine pit selection – does tomorrow sort of not really matter as much either? Um, yeah, I mean, I think the fact that it doesn't have a massive impact on pit selection is probably diminishes it slightly. But, yeah, like just like anything else, you know, I mean, um, I'm not going to, you know, for the record, I didn't deliberately try to go to the back last year. It wasn't intentional. <laughs> it makes sure everybody knows that. Uh, and it wasn't easy to do, and it certainly created a lot of uh, – uh, you know, kind of dodgy situations, right? And you never know what could happen. You, you could, you could, if you get behind a little bit and um, anything can happen, right? Like somebody could have a problem, could have a tire, you know, whatever, uh, and, and get ready to race. So I think everybody wants to be up front and in control and you want to qualify well and all the things that go along with it. It just, you know, all these teams are really good and, and the crew chiefs are really good and the drivers are really good and the pickers are really good. So, you know, if they go to the back or don't qualify, great. It's not going to be the end of the world. But, um, you know, throughout the weekend, obviously, you want to take advantage of every opportunity you have, and qualifying is an opportunity to succeed. So we'll all try to do that. Last one for me. Um, when James Small and Chris Gabart were here earlier, they were both kind of very relaxed and loose. And Gabart was asked about it, and he said, it, it's all about just getting in the championship race. The race is gravy. Like, everything was just – everything in the season is predicated on just getting here. So that's maybe a sense of calm. Do you guys feel that? I mean, is that kind of how you guys – look at it as well yeah I mean I would say very much so um, you, you push hard all season long to set yourself up to get into the playoffs and once you're in the playoffs you know there's just so much emphasis on transferring round to round um, but all of that sets you up to, to try to make it here so getting here I mean our, our prep for this week I can't even say that it was that much different than the prep you would do any other normal week um, not saying that we were you know too relaxed for this race but if you've done your homework right the other races you still had to have a really high level of intensity and prep for the other races so coming here the biggest change was just the timeline of getting the cars loaded they had to load Tuesday night where normally it's you know a Thursday night load so long hours Monday and Tuesday um, but yeah we we uh, we I've said this many times we have a rate uh, a way that we go about racing a way that we prep every week we took that to Martinsville and Kansas before that and Texas before that and that's kind of the same same, you know, uh, I would say methodology that we brought here. Yeah, I mean, I'm pretty calm and relaxed at, you know, whatever, 445 on Friday, you know, come ask me at lap 150 how I feel, right? I mean, that's going to be a different story. So uh, I agree, like, you know, coming here is a, you know, is a huge step. You're one of the elite, right? So to get here is a big accomplishment, but, you know, I'm not going to kid myself that every one of us aren't going to you know, empty the tank on Sunday to get all we can get. And I'm certainly, if you ask, you know, Chris uh, on Sunday during the race, he's not going to be super, you know, I'd say the, I'd say the level of intensity is going to ratchet up a little bit.
I'm gonna go to Claire and then Jordan. Claire B. Lang, Sirius XM NASCAR Radio. Nate kind of took my question because I did ask James Small and Gabe Hart about whether they were stressed and the euphoria and the feeling of getting here, but then we get down to the competition. How do you keep your teams from, you know, showing the crack, you know, from cracking, showing the stress? Because you guys obviously are warriors, but you gotta have a whole team behind you that does not feel the stress when all the cameras are on them at their pit stall. And you know how everybody lines up behind the pit stall on Sunday morning, right? How do you do that? I mean, I, I think it just goes to, uh, you know, how you approach races all year long. And um, we haven't, our, our team specifically speaking for the five, we haven't changed our approach week in and week out. We've treated every week as like almost a must win race, you know, somewhere in that category, just because, uh, you know, all the competition is not, uh, they're not ever taking their foot off the gas, so we can't either. So we pressure our guys every week for how we prepare the cars. We pressure our guys every week in pit practice for how we do pit stops. Um, you know, we've had a lot of reps and, you know, some pretty intense situations at the end of races when we're, you know, in contention or fighting for it. Uh, and, and of course, this is a, a big deal. It's a huge race, and, and we see it as that, uh, you know, kind of coming in. But then when you get in the moment, um, the, the most fundamental things, all the basics, you know, of, of doing a pit stop or of working on your car that, uh, you know, you've had all year long, the basics are going to win out uh, of just getting all the right things right. And, you know, don't try to overstep, don't try to overdo just because there is the added hype and the pressure and, and all the good things that come with this race. Uh, you, you've still just got to hit the, hit the very fundamental things right. And uh, that hopefully will take care of itself. And Alan, what do you think it'll come down to here? So many different elements, but... What does your gut tell you it'll come down to? Uh, the fastest car. Pretty confident on that. That's usually what wins it. All right, we're going to go to Jordan and then Zach. Jordan Bianchi, The Athletic. Uh, this is for both of you. This is the first time Hendrick Motorsports has had two teams in the, the championship four. Curious what the relationship is. How, that, how, good, how will you guys have worked that dynamic this week? what the relationship is, is, is normal, and is any joking, banter, you know, good-natured ribbing, anything like that? <laughs> real, real quick, I'll, I'll start. There's a, there's a lot of the way our team functions and we operate that uh, obviously with the lineage of our team you would attribute to, to Chad Knauss and Jimmy, but me personally, I, I've looked up to Alan for many years, and uh, there, there's a lot of his wisdom, and I, I feel like Alan's really good at seeing the 30,000-foot view always uh, of any race and of any approach for a team. So. I've learned a lot from him, and I think it's, um, you know, brought us closer. I think it's brought our teams closer, you know, with kind of understanding how I lean on him and his perspective sometimes. He's been doing this for a long time, won a lot of races. So um, I, I think our teams probably work closer together now, and especially this week, than we probably have all year or, or years past. Um, and that relationship just continues to build, and, and it's cool to have, you know, all, the, all four of the teammates winning races and, of course, to have two of them here. Uh, makes it that much more special. Yeah, I, I agree. I mean, I think at the end of the day, we're genuinely friends, and we like to be around each other, and our teams are, are friends and like to hang out. And, yeah, like, so it's really pretty easy when you want, um, you know, everybody wants to do well, but at some point in time, you know, you got to get past yourself, and it's good to see your friends and your teammates succeed. So I'm genuinely happy for all their success, and, you know, I'm going to do everything I can in my power to win on Sunday, but... Um, I'll be the first guy high fiving them if uh, you know if, if they're fortunate enough to get it done. Yeah. Zero. Yeah. If anything, it's been closer. Yeah. I mean, I went over and looked at his car bunch, and his car chief's over looking at my car bunch, so it was good. Yeah. Going to Zach. Is this the Zach? Sorry, <laughs> we have two Zachs over there. We'll go to Zach, and then I have a question from the press box, and we'll go to Daniel. Okay. Uh, Zach Albert, NASCAR.com. Uh, for Cliff, um, you know, th we've heard some stories about some periods of self-doubt that you might have had uh, during uh, when you were kind of injected into the situation with Jimmy and um, some of the early struggles that you guys had had. What was that situation like, and, and how did you kind of persevere through that to kind of get you to where you are now? Yeah, I mean, I think that was probably natural for, you know, anyone going through that where you have, you know, arguably one of the best to ever do it you know, kind of towards the end of his career and, and, and you're pushing yourself and the team and him so hard to try to make, uh, you know, the, the results happen, make the success happen on track. So then when you don't get it, you know, naturally it's easy to look in the mirror and doubt yourself, which I, like I would imagine anybody else in that situation did or, or would do. Um, 
but th there were so many valuable lessons that I learned from Jimmy through the whole process. Like there's never been a, a, you know, a moment that any of us could ever pick out in Jimmy Johnson's career where he didn't on and off the track carry himself like a true champion. Even when we had bad days at the racetrack, that's how he carried himself. That's how we raced every week was, uh, you know, high level of character, high level of integrity. And uh, of course, you want to push yourself to be better. Um, so even when things weren't going our way, uh, I, I knew that the, you know, the, the foundation of our team, the strength and integrity of our team was, was there, led by him. Um, and, and so since then, we've kind of continued that. And, and that's why uh, whether we have a good day, and, and certainly we've had a great year, or, or even a bad day, you don't ride the highs and the lows too extreme. You know, just kind of stay focused and, and keep pushing forward. So that's, uh, I, I would say that's the biggest thing. And if you'd been told uh, before the season that you'd, you'd have be sitting on nine wins with a shot at a championship with a tenth win, what would your reaction be? Yeah, I would. Uh, I would have probably said no way. That's that, that's some pretty big numbers. But um, yeah, we, we've been really fortunate. The timing of this year to get Kyle back in our car, um, to have all four teammates at Hendrick Motorsports work, you know, closer together now than we probably ever have have great cars, great bodies and chassis and engines and, and all the things that it takes uh, and, and to have the four teams working together uh, so well makes it makes it special, makes it doable, makes it foreseeable to, to you know, know that you can achieve the success and keep it going. And it's not just been our car. You know, the, these guys have been up front every week. All the other teammates have been up front every week. Um, and so it's been a privilege to, to work for a company like Hendrick Motorsports through the ups and downs and know that we've had Mr. H behind us the whole time, and especially, uh, you know, his leadership this year as we've had success, you know, kind of keep us all grounded um, and, and quite a blessing, obviously, for the success that we've had on track. Um, I have a question from Lee Spencer up in the press box for Cliff. She said, Cliff, at what point did you know this deal with Larson was going to work out? I guess the easy one would be to say our, our win in Vegas, but I went and hung out with him at Millbridge when he ran a midget in uh, December last year. And uh, getting to know him and just, you know, that, that was a little bit of an unfamiliar environment for me uh, to be around those cars and to be around the dirt track. And, you know, the way he and I communicated about what he had going on that day um, and just the way he drove the car that day, he ultimately ended up winning, of course. Um, kind of let me know that, you know, he and I could, communicate no matter what uh, you know environment we were in because again that was very unfamiliar for me that we could connect uh, you know communicate uh, again a lot of the basics for um, you know building what we needed to get started this season so then once the se season got started and, and obviously all, all the hindered cars were running good and, and we were one of them um, we just got to build on that okay and we're going to go to the back we have a question from Daniel and a question from Zach Hi, uh, Alan, you, you sort of touched on this with the uh, answer earlier, but I just want to ask both of you, this, this is the final Gen 6 car. It's, the, it's, the, it's a significant end of an era for, for NASCAR in general. What was it like for you guys to be building this car and putting it together, and what does it mean to you? Yeah, it's uh, kind of mixed emotions. You know, obviously putting a car together to come race for a championship is, you know, a, an amazing feeling, and extremely motivating and then uh you know knowing it's the last car that that will will build at henrik motorsports in that form or fashion is uh i don't know how to describe it, a little bit surreal it's just it's just uh yeah it's it's uh you know a to have the car i feel super privileged and be racing for a championship with it it su feels super privileged and i just think back of all the people who've contributed in in some way, shape, or form, and you know all the the amazing people out of, that I've been fortunate enough to work with, and we've had there that have contributed to these cars, um, you know, and it's uh, so that's cool. That's a, a neat part of it. But then there's also the part um, that I've watched like crates of stuff get loaded on the flatbed trailers throughout the week, you know, going away, and you're just like, wow, this is this is just different. It's just different. I've never I've never experience something like that so um yeah i mean certainly very excited for the next chapter but um yeah i mean it's you know i don't know how to describe it like i don't know what, what a great analogy would be but like you know if you lived in a house for 20 years and you move out like there's just some attachment there right i mean you're obviously trying to go on to bigger and better things but you still have some sentimental value attached yeah and i guess my answer would be you know obviously a very bittersweet moment we're all excited for what's ahead but uh it kind of hit home for me Yes, seeing the, the pallets of the crates of, of things move out of the shop, but 
a lot of the guys that um, you know are in the chassis shop or the body shop, uh, fab shop that do a lot of the work, um, you know, week in and week out that maybe we don't see around our cars like on load day or you know in the final stages of the car. We had a lot of people around the shop this week, which is great, and they, and they were all the guys that are uh, part part of all the earlier stages of the process of getting the cars built. Um, to see their energy and their excitement, you know, come out there and be a part of that was pretty cool. Very bittersweet at the same time because you know, uh, you know, roles are changing and, and things are going to change moving forward. But uh, yeah, yeah, we'll see. And uh, Alan, uh, Chase seemed really at ease yesterday during the, the media center uh, or the media day availability. Um, the fact that you guys have been through this already after coming here last year, doing it together, what? What has that done for the mindset heading into this year's championship race? Um, it, it seems like he's kind of at peace with who he is as a competitor and, and really has come to terms with uh, who he is. Um, how has that helped enter this season for you guys? Yeah, I, I think you touched on really the key points. And absolutely, you know, I think that, you know, winning a championship is a huge accomplishment. And when, you, when you're able to do that, you feel like you – you know, validate yourself a little bit and then have a bit more self-confidence. And, you know, with that self-confidence, you know, comes comfort um, and maybe a little more relaxed state. And, uh, the, you know, you just have to go through this thing. Um, and no matter, I mean, all of us have raced it not in it. And you can do that as much as you want. You just kind of have to go through it um, to really – know the roadmap so to speak so I think that that's helping him um, this year for sure to to, to be at ease a little bit because you know maybe he knows a little more or a little little better I guess uh, what potentially is around the corner you know you don't know for sure but you just have maybe a little bit more comfort you know knowing you've been through it um, so yeah um, it's good anytime you know all those you know pressure situations and experiences if it's you know winning or or competing in a final four or, you know the round of eight all that certainly adds up and pays um dividends and experience that help you in in situations like this we're going to wrap up quickly with dustin and then jenna dustin long nbc sports uh this track uh, recent history, it seems like there's a mix between some races have very few cautions and a lot of long runs and some races have multiple cautions and a lot of short runs. So as you have looked and prepared for this weekend, how does that impact your mindset, your thinking process? Because it's not like maybe some tracks where you kind of know that some tracks, you know, one, one segment's going to be pretty much green. This seems like it's it, it seems like it's kind of a mix across the board. Yeah, I mean, I guess I would say we saw a little bit of both in the spring. Um, we had some runs in the spring. I, I think it was stage one and stage three that we had long runs, and then maybe the second stage there was a, a lot of yellows. Uh, I may have that a little mixed up, um, but but obviously that teaches you a bit about what you think you need in your car, managing tire sets. Uh, you know it's easy to get caught in a trap where every time a caution comes out, you think you need to put tires on, but you, you still have to be mindful of the number of tire sets. Um, so yeah, uh, obviously you want the best of both worlds. You want a car that can go on a short run and have long run speed, but there's always going to be a compromise there. Uh, so we've, we've talked through that, you know, a good bit leading up to, you know, this weekend, what we would need in, in either scenario and, uh, you know, practice, uh, unfortunately today isn't going to give you the best indication of that just because I don't think the track, uh, was anywhere close uh, of where it's going to be during the race. Uh, so you're just going to have to know how to react and respond, you know, as the day goes, depending on short or, or long run. Rep, Jenna. Thanks. My question is for both of you because I think you both have different perspectives to answer it. I asked um, Latart and Dale Jarrett this week about um, sort of what potential rivalry there could be between Chase and Kyle. And both of them, li they, they likened it to Jeff versus Jimmy in, in the years that they were racing head-to-head -head for the championship. Alan, you were inside at the time watching it. Um, I don't know what your perspective was, but do you two see any similarities um, in sort of this head-to-head -head battle between two teammates? Hmm, I, I personally don't, really. Um, what I saw 
an experience with Jeff and Jimmy was a different dynamic, really, because Jeff was, you know, Jeff. I don't know how else to describe it. I mean, he was whatever, the GOAT, right? Uh, and then he really brought Jimmy on, right? I mean, he, he I won't say he created Jimmy, but he's the one who gave Jimmy those opportunities. So this is different to me because they're both, I mean, Chase, you know, and if you, if you would script it that way, Chase is actually younger than Kyle. <laughs> so it's like, I don't, I don't know, like that just doesn't work in my mind. I do think the parallel is there two of the best drivers walking the planet right now, right? So as was Jimmy and Jeff. So I'm sure, I'm sure that that brings some, you know, uh, you know, if you want to describe this competition or however you want to describe it, but that can be healthy. You know, that can be a good thing uh, for both of them. But yeah, I don't, I don't see, I don't see the, I, I don't see the dynamic between the two of them and the teams anything like it was, in my opinion, in the past um, yeah. oh. at all. So go ahead. Yeah, my answer would be no too, and and I wasn't, you know, on inside the teams during during that time. But hearing uh, Jeff's description of it from the past and, and Jimmy's description of, of it from the past. Um, you know, I, I think now the, the private conversations that I have with Larson about Chase is, and Alan and I have actually talked about this before, Chase is so intellectual, it's crazy. Not that Larson isn't, but we all know Kyle Larson for he can just hit the go button and, and just go really fast. And um, Chase is so smart about strategizing himself and his race that, you know, we spend more time talking about how to learn from the, the Chase Elliott things, you know, his qualities, his nature. Uh, more than any sort of man, you know, we we've, we've got to go beat him. Like we don't we don't talk about it that way. It's like understanding what makes him good, so that when we are competing against him, we you know just know what to look for and we have that perspective. Um, and, and I really think they push each other in a pretty healthy way because I know there's been times that Chase has called Larson and leaned on him about you know some of his dirt knowledge. Obviously, Chase has you know kind of dabbled in some dirt racing this year. And I can just tell and, and sense with Chase, he has a lot of respect for what Larson does on that side of things and recognizes that there is some carryover from how Larson can, can do that, you know, in, in the dirt world and then bring it to the cup side, uh, which allows him to be the guy that we know that can hit the go button, right? And, and Chase probably recognizes that he wants to do that a little more. And then completely on the flip side, uh, Larson doesn't mind asking Chase or, or having conversations about Chase of how he's so tech on smart about you know, putting himself in the right place on a restart or, you know, at the end of a long run and how he takes care of his tires and his stuff. Uh, so, yeah, long way of saying, no, I don't know that it's the same. The parallel is they're both two really, really talented drivers and both at Hendrick Motorsports. So I guess there's a, a thread. <laughs> I think it's personally. I think it's his experience. I mean, he's there's nobody. Well, he's really intelligent, but then he's experienced so many things at such a young age, and he is very cerebral. He he pays a lot of attention to everything that goes on. Um, yeah, and yeah, I don't I don't know that it's I, you know you can ask a bunch of people to give different answers. I don't believe in the the genetics thing. I think it's more of of what you're subjected to and, and, you know, what you learn and what you want to do with it and, and what you're taught, right? And obviously he's done, you know, Bill obviously is, it, it subjected him to a lot of things and helped him out a lot, but Chase, you know, that's one thing, right? We've all, I mean, well, us that have kids, right? I mean, you can leave them water all you want, they've got to drink, right? And Chase was smart enough to to pick up on it. And uh, to me, take it to, uh, he is the smartest driver I've ever been around. Like, he, he's, he is just really, yeah, I mean, he's he's just super intelligent, and everything he does is very calculated, and like nothing is ever at, at a, on a whim. Where traditionally most race car drivers are like, you know, yeah, here we go, pull the pin, you know. Like he's he's really uh, he's really like you can talk to him afterwards, and you're like, you went like ten layers deep on this, you know, like wow. Was it Kyle? Yeah, yes. yeah, yeah. Uh, uh, which Kyle are you talking about? Sorry. Yeah, I oh, was thinking gotcha. Kyle Busch. Okay, sorry. Yep. Yeah, I do think. Um, yeah. Yeah. Uh, you know, I, mean, I had Kyle Young, but yes, more, more so than Kyle. Okay. He is Kyle Larson. I'm sorry, Kyle Bush is always trying to think like, kind of one. To me, it's a little bit different. Like Kyle Bush is thinking, like what he does different than a lot of people is he's like one move ahead. You know, where, where Chase is like every move is very calculated. 
Yeah, for sure. For sure. And there's times after the races, I'm like, dude, you don't need to do that. It's like, no. <laughs> no you're, you're thinking way too much. All right, gentlemen, thanks for joining us today, and good luck on Sunday. Thank you.